I do not know what's going on. So I just had to delete that one. I'm going to start us over. And we're talking about uh, post-op from surgery, from breast explantation, from me anyway, for three weeks ago. I had a girlfriend of mine that had hers explanted the week before me and another girlfriend that had hers explanted on the day of mine. And I was sharing how we were feeling. And my girlfriend, Laura, there's actually a video of her and I in the, down below in the, in my posts. And I was talking to her about how she was feeling and she had been diagnosed with all these different things. And when I had introduced her to the breast implant illness group, she literally had thought I had lost my mind. She's like, you've got to be kidding me. And was very, very close to it. Then her researchy brain is she's a type A type personality. Like she's a get her done kind of girl and she's a paramedic and she's worked in hospitals. She does all sorts of really fantastic things and did her due diligence and found out that she's that she possibly did have breast implant illness. And the more she researched and the more she saw what the other girls were going through, she decided to have hers explanted. And she is thrilled. She is doing amazing. I'm gonna do an interview with her this week, Tuesday night. I'll be on Clubhouse at eight o'clock. Well, hi, Connie, nice to have you here. So I'm going to do an interview with her Tuesday night on Clubhouse, and we're going to talk about why she got in breast implants in the first place, because we don't just get implants to have implants. There's a reason behind what we do if that's, you know, it's um, for whatever reason. Everybody has different reasons for it, but there is a mental piece to all of this, and, you know, she was really, really scared about getting them out, and because, you know what, when you get your implants, it's an image part of an image thing, not a total image change for everybody, but it can be for some people. And there was just a lot of emotional stuff around her implants. And so she's gonna come on live Tuesday night. Hopefully we can put that on Grandma's on a Mission at the same time that we have it on Clubhouse. I know there's a way to do it. I just have to figure it out. So we'll be live Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central and hopefully um, you can hear what she has to say about her explantation about her implants and her emotional journey and that whole thing and then I had my explantation it'll be three and a half weeks well three weeks ago this last Thursday and I had another girlfriend that had hers done right after me and we all three had the same doctor and our doctor is amazing as Dr. Kayan and she's in Wood or um, St. or um, excuse me Wyzetta Holy goodness, we have so many little towns around us, it's hard to keep track, and they're all just like one right after the other. Anyway, she was having a little bit of challenges with hers from her drains, so the drains were the uh, drains were after explantation, after she had pulled the drains, one had kept um, having a little bit of infection, and so she got antibiotics and all that, and she's doing really good right now too, but all three of us are extremely grateful that we had them out, and I've noticed too that for me, mine was a little different, so, I, it's not something that I had expected, and and I've definitely had to have a lot of patience getting through this. And one of the things that happened to me is right after surgery, I actually blew up like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not even joking. I remember being so loaded up on anesthesia, and I'm looking down at my foot, and I'm like, I can barely see my toes. I was so full of fluids, and my doctor, when I went in for my physical, she didn't understand either what had happened. And the only thing that we can think of is that it was just a, um, could have been a reaction to the anesthesia, you know, or the, you know, a flood of other toxins, you know, just flooding my body and along with the IVs. And yeah, I was like, I was like, and I looked like I was like bigger than nine months pregnant. Like I literally had blew up and it was just crazy. I was just like, <laughs> walking like a zombie. It was pretty funny. I mean, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. And this is what I love about the group. So I went back in the group and there was a couple of the girls, the same thing had happened to them. And one of them, it was like three weeks before she got to normal. And that's what's been happening with me. However, I decided a couple of weeks ago that I was going to do a cleanse. And because I wanted to get rid of the toxins faster and like let's move things along faster. And it made me very, very sick. And... I, I knew something was way off and I couldn't figure out what it was. And so I, I was like, no, oh, this cleanse isn't working. So I 
made a salad and I put some cheese in it and I put uh, some like these little fried onion things because there's a little some carbs going on there and once I ate that about 20 minutes later I started feeling so much better and then I found out interestingly enough on Clubhouse this last Tuesday there actually there was a uh, breast implant illness group on there which was interesting because I had had started mine a month ago, but I hadn't stayed it because I hadn't, I have not felt good for the whole time I've, I've explanted. I just haven't had the energy. It's been really weird. And anyway, I'm glad that this happened. There's a lady on there. I'll give you, uh, the URL is on, actually it's in my bio on my, on my Facebook page, on my regular page, on my personal page, the heel is real.org. And talks about all these the Facebook. I don't know what you can or cannot or will not let people know. I don't know. So I'm just speaking and I'm just letting people know because I want to definitely be an advocate for breast implant illness because it is a real thing and so many people are sick with this. And anyway, her name's Akimi. It's her. She she came up with this. Uh, there's a private Facebook group called uh, Breast Implant Illness by Nicole. So there's so many people advocating for this. And I just found out too that the FDA now has definitely um, acknowledged that breast implant illness is real and there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on about that. So I just want to be the messenger, get out the message and let you know that, you know, when you're open to it and you're feeling, you know, like you want to know, you definitely can just reach out to me and let me know and I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you about it. But I'm loving it. I'm... I'm feeling like Disney World today. Got Los Angeles out of Mickey on today. I'm definitely feeling energized today. I get to see my grandkids today. I've not been able to have them around for three weeks either because I've not been able to, I can't lift anything over five pounds. I still can't do that, but my daughter's going to be here today. So she's, I uh, definitely can help me with the changing of the diaper of the one year old and that sort of thing. So I'm so excited about that. So I'm all dressed for the little guys this morning. And that brings me to my daughter. My daughter is, oh my gosh, she's my hero. She's my angel on earth. She has been from the very, very second she was born. She's always been my sunshine. She's the one that smiles and really holds this family together in our darkest days. And she still is doing that. Her, she, uh, her best friend, like bestie, uh, passed away this last Tuesday night from breast cancer. And she had the, I don't remember what the specific name of it is, but there's a gene that uh, she had that she had inherited from her mom. And her mom had died when she was very young at an early age, at a, an, at a, and at a young age of the of breast cancer. And now Trisha, her name's Trisha, passed away this Tuesday night from it, left behind a little boy who just turned nine on Sunday and a 17-year-old daughter and a 19-year-old son. So our hearts and prayers love go out to them and my daughter has been through this whole COVID thing really when you, there's just some situations where you just really look at it as a true blessing so my daughter has been able to be with Trisha through all of her chemo treatments radiation treatments with her and her family helping them get through the most difficult times in their entire lives and because my daughter has gone through this with my son she knew all the all the steps to take and the right people to talk to and all these um, different things that, you know, when you're going through a, a major life-changing, altering event like this, it's very challenging to really know what to do to, into the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And my daughter was so instrumental in helping her best friend and her family get through all these and is still continuing to do that as they move forward into a new chapter of their lives now. And she's my hero. She's my absolute angel. And I'm hoping that tomorrow and the day after and the day after she takes the downtime for herself because she really needs it because I can tell. I just love her so much. And and right now she just wants a little space. So she's like, don't give me any hugs, mom. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So that's where we're at with that. But yeah, she's amazing. And I just absolutely, absolutely love her. And I just want her to know that. And I cannot tell her enough. And my little saying to her is I love her bigger than the universe, her and her brothers. And, and, I, and now my grandkids. And that's exactly what it is. I absolutely love them bigger than the universe. So 
There's a lot of major things happening in the last few weeks and I just want you to know that if you're going through something in your life and that's what I love about this grandma's on a mission is that you're not alone and I know that to be true because when life handed me the shit storm oh, sorry Lord sorry Facebook back in you know 2011 I I was very grateful that a great friend of mine introduced me to a culture of friends that really lifted me up and inspired me and continued to do that for me to this day so just know that you know if there's anything that you know there you can google it you can research it you can look for people you can look for groups but don't put yourself in a situation where you feel like you're all alone or that you have no one to turn to because there is somebody that's going through what you've been through has been through what you've been through and can help you get through to get to the next step. So make sure that you love on yourself enough or like yourself enough to be open enough to doing something for yourself because you've got to take care of yourself in order to take care of other people. And that's perfect segue into my mother even. So my mom is in a facility, as you all know, with dementia and she's holding her own. And my ex-husband, my kids' dad, used to call my mom a tough old bird. <laughs> she's a tough old bird, all right? We're like, she's just hanging on. And she, we FaceTime twice a week on Wednesdays, and I'll have a FaceTime with her at 10.30 this morning. I, we do this every week, and she just, she just smiles and grins and in, and I know that she recognizes me and I'll, I'll, the nurse and I will have conversations because my mom can't have the conversation, but my mom can understand what's going on. Seemingly, it seems so anyway, because there'll be things that I'll say and she'll just start giggling. And like for an example, on Wednesday, I'll tell a really uh, cute story about that. So her aide, uh, Autumn, was there. And Autumn really takes care of my mom when she's there. Like she paints her nails and curls her hair, makes sure my mom's, you know, teeth are brushed and all these things. And I just absolutely love Adam. She's amazing to be with my mom. And she's not the only one. There's Jeff and there's Julie and Julie is actually Autumn's mom. And so they, they all take really great turns with my mom. And so I'm really blessed that I don't, I don't have to worry about my mom. And anyways, so we were talking on Wednesday and Autumn says, oh my gosh, I can just see your mom. She's the one that would bring the lemonade and the cookies. And I went, what? I'm like, that is not my mom. And Autumn was truly like, like totally blown away by that. And she's like, Are you? she's like, you're kidding me, right? I said, no, that is not my mom. I said, I would be the one to bring lemonade and cookies, not my mom. I said, my mom's, when so I told her, you know, what my ex-husband has said that she's a tough old bird, and and uh, so my mom used to work at warehouses. That was my mom's work, and my mom had me when she was barely sixteen. She didn't have a high school education, and my mom was around some really awful, or was in relationships that were just really, really awful until she met uh, the love of her life. His name is Don. And my dad taught my mom a lot of things that I was, blew my mind. And one of them, and, the, and, and say what you will, do what you will. I'm not asking for hate mail or anything like that. This is just the way it was. When you come from a Midwestern town and you grow up in the country and there's, you know, you, you hunt, you hunt for a living. That's what a lot of people do in the Midwest. This isn't LA and, you know, I live in Minneapolis and Yes, there's a lot of people who don't do those things, but we have a lot of farm country. So I just want to set the record for this. Okay, just set you up for this. So anyway, my mom's boyfriend at that time, his name was Don. They were together for years. And my mom's Christmas money was made by trapping. Her and Don would go out and they'd go in these sloughs. And there's my little itty bitty mom who's like five foot four and, you know, maybe weighed 125 pounds at the time out trapping. And that's what she did and that was her Christmas money and she was proud of that like because she was tough and you know she could go out and, and hang out with you know with with Don who was this like bigger he wasn't bigger bigger but he was like uh, he was tall and lean but he was like burly at the same time like he was definitely a guy's guy so anyway so and yes there's that saying too so anyway that's that's what my mom did but my mom was a warehouse worker 
not a clerical worker and that's what she did for a living so she was tough like that was a hard job and i remember a job that she had that she worked in a freezer at a plant for months and her arthritis would get so bad she could barely move and and she would just want to cry and she just wouldn't you know and then there came a point too where my mom loved flowers and it was a big deal to her for me because i live in minnesota and she was living in sioux falls at the time or had moved to sioux falls and so even in Worthington when she lived there, I would go every Mother's Day after, because I have a brother that committed suicide in 1989. And my brother, it was my mom and my brother's like Mother's Day thing. It was like their day, it was, it was really cute. And anyway, after my brother had died, then uh, me and my mom started hanging out on Mother's Day and then we would go flower shopping and spend the day doing that to all these different flower places and then go home and the next day we would plant all her plants and then I drive back to Minneapolis. So it was a really, really wonderful, wonderful day. So my mom's got this really hardcore side, but then she's got this really soft side, but my mom is not about lemonade and cookies. <laughs> Just so you know, that's not her at all. That's okay though. Mm. I love this coffee, Bulletproof coffee. It's the only way to go every single day. I don't care if I'm on my eating healthy or not eating healthy. I got to have my Bulletproof coffee. Absolutely love it. Anyway, so I just wanted to come in and share those few stories with you because that's what's been going on the last few weeks. And and I had every intention of being on on Saturdays no matter how I felt. And I just seriously could not even get up out of bed. Like I was glued either to the couch or to the chair. Because watching the stupidest movies, I have, I've seen more TV in the last three weeks than I have in my entire life. And that is no joke. Is my brain too, right before... Oh, that's where I was going with the other stories. Right before... I went and had explantation. Like my brain fog was so bad that I was afraid to leave anything. So like even for example, like I was afraid to walk away from the refrigerator because I'd leave the refrigerator door open. Or if I'd let our little Hannah outside, I'd be our little Chewini, I would be afraid that if I shut the door, I'd forget about her and she'd freeze to death. So I'd have to make sure I stood by the door, made sure I watched her, made sure I brought her back in the house and then shut the door. And names... Not a, I could not remember names, even people closest to me. It was like, it was seriously really, really bad. My doctor even, and I was talking to my doctor about it, and I was telling him, I said, I really think it's when I had to go in for my checkup. Yeah, thank you, Connie. I'm feeling more like myself. I still got a little ways to go. I still got a lot of puffy going on, but nothing like I had in the beginning. <laughs> it was insane. And then, uh, and definitely now, two things are, I my brain is, so during my, uh, my pre-op before surgery and I had to go to my doctor and we were talking about it and I was telling him some of these things and I said yeah I said I'm pretty sure it's breast implant related and he's like no it sounds like maybe you should maybe we should set you up with somebody to find out if you have Alzheimer's or dementia and I was like I promise you I know it sounds like it and yes my mom had it and yes my grand or has it and my grandma had it I don't have it I can promise you that. And sure enough, after my explantation, the first, like I said, the first couple weeks, I was like, I couldn't, all I could do is just focus on making sure that I wasn't in a lot of pain. That was like the first and foremost thing. And then this last week, especially the more that I'm healing, my brain, my brain fog is definitely lifting. Like I can remember a lot of names now. I can remember, I can definitely walk away from the door now and know that my dog's outside and I can let her back in. I can remember where I parked my car. Um, I have little moments where I'm like, oh, dang it. Like yesterday, I walked out without my coat. Like something so simple as that. Like I put that on every single day, but it was really warm out. So I kind of have to give myself a little bit of credit for that. So, but there's a lot that's involved in breast implant illness. And so, like I said, on my personal page, you can go to it, thehealisreal.org. Make sure, you know, if, if you know someone and they're having a lot of health challenges and you know that they have implants, make sure that you let them know about that. And uh, in there is a list of all of the different uh, ailments and illnesses that we as implant have. And I, for one, am so grateful to get explanted. And so are my two other girlfriends. And I've had three other girls reach out to me talking about it. So they're, they're definitely definitely is a lot of this going on and I am going to continue advocating for it. I'm going to continue being the grandma's on a mission to feel fit, fabulous and fired up at any age 
when it comes to our breast implants. And I just want to make sure that you're safe and that you're well and that you know that there is another way. So I want to thank you, Connie, and everyone else for joining in. And if you have any questions or you want to know anything more, just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to have a chat with you. So you take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday at 9 a.m. Take care, everyone. Thank you.